Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the mistakes that I made when I first got the Panasonic GH5. So hopefully, you can learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to go through them, so that you can go straight to making some awesome videos with your GH5. This is a quarantine edition. If you're new to this channel, my name is Caleb and I've been doing freelance video production since 2012. This channel is to help you make your own videos, whether you just started or you've been doing it for a while, whether you shoot on the GH5 or any other camera, if that's something you're interested in, it'd be awesome if you hit that subscribe button. All right, so during the filming of this video, there's a global pandemic and people are either social distancing or physical distancing, whatever term you're using, that's what people are doing right now. So during this physical distancing, it's also an opportunity for a little bit of self-reflection. So one of the things I was reflecting on was some of the mistakes that I made when I first got the GH5, but hopefully you can learn from them so that you don't have to go through those things and you can just start making awesome videos. Now, another thing before I get too far into this video, I've had some of you ask about my color grading or how I color my videos. So here's what I was thinking about doing. I wanna give away a free LUT package, including the one that I made and that I use for every single one of my YouTube videos. So here's the thing, once I get to around 1,000 subscribers, which right now I'm about at 800, but once I get to 1,000 subscribers, I wanna give away that package. So will you help me get to 1,000 subscribers and I will give away a free LUT package, including the one that I use for all of my videos that I made personally. And then I'll also put together a video showing you how I color my videos and how I apply the LUT, which in all honesty, I try to make as simple of a process as possible. So will you help me get to a thousand subscribers? This video isn't about coloring, even though I put like this red LED and a blue one in my gear closet to try to pretty up this shot a little bit. I know I've got my light and my mic in the shot, but it's quarantine, right? But this video isn't about color, it's about mistakes that I made. So let's get into the first mistake that I made when I first got the Panasonic GH5. All right, so I was so excited to get 120 frames per second on the GH5 that right out of the gate, I took my camera to 120 frames and I pretty much shot everything at 120 frames per second. I'm talking about everything that was not an interview. I pretty much shot all in 120 frames per second and I did not explore other frame rates that the camera had. Don't get me wrong, 120p is an awesome tool to have, but it's so easy to overuse, especially if you're having somebody walk down the street Man, it looks so good in slow motion. Or I do a lot of manufacturing videos and having sparks flying in the shot and you know people welding and machines moving. It looks so good in 120 frames per second, but I just totally overused it. The GH5 has so many awesome frame rate options that you can go so far beyond just 120 frames. You've got 60 frames, you got 72 frames, you have 180p that you could use in some cases, but shooting in 120p does not automatically make your video cinematic. So I would encourage you to try other frame rates and mix those frame rates together and see what kind of video you can put together using those different frame rates. So that was my first mistake. I shot everything in 120p, which is an awesome frame rate, don't get me wrong, but I overused it. All right, another mistake that I made was I didn't explore other shoot settings. So I shot so much of my stuff in either HD 8-bit or 4K 8-bit because of those variable frame rates like when like I just talked about, but I was shooting so much in those settings that I wasn't exploring some of the other awesome settings that the GH5 has, like Cinema 4K, 10-bit, 10-bit 422, which you can just get some awesome color options in those. So I wasn't exploring all the different shoot settings like I should have when I first got the GH5. Since then, I've ventured out a lot and have tried these different settings and see what settings work in these different situations or shooting situations or circumstances that I'm in. Don't get stuck like I did shooting 8-bit all the time because of that variable frame rate. Now, I know some of those settings might be an issue depending on and the computer that you're editing on, but I want to encourage you to try those different shoot settings and see what kind of things you can come up with shooting those. All right, the third mistake that I made, we all know that the GH5 has awesome in-body 
image stabilization. And here's where my mistake came in. For me, handheld became too much of the norm. So I wasn't exploring other things like being locked off on a tripod for B-roll or getting on the Ronin M or Ronin S. My default was almost handheld because the stabilization is so good, even without the dual image stabilization, if you have a lens that's not stabilized, the in-body stabilization of the GH5 is so good, you barely even notice that you don't have a stabilized lens. So I was doing too much handheld. Handheld is an awesome tool to have and an awesome skill to learn, but when it comes to that being your only way of shooting, that's where the mistake comes in. Some shots, you just need to be on a tripod. Maybe you just need a slow pan or you need an ultra smooth shot with a gimbal. Explore some of those other options other than just handheld, even though the in-body image stabilization is so good on the GH5. So this next mistake is a little controversial, maybe not even necessary. I consider it a mistake because I do client work and that is I did not upgrade my GH5 to vlog now the fact that vlog is a separate purchase from the gh5 i just think is ludicrous anyway and that should be changed immediately but it wasn't until after a couple years of using the gh5 that i actually made the purchase of the vlog key to install vlog on the gh5 now i don't think vlog is necessarily something that you have to have especially if you're making home movies or youtube videos that type of thing but i think it's something worth having because it teaches you how to color correct and color grade log footage, which I think if you wanna progress in a career in video production, I think that is a necessary tool. So for me, I consider not upgrading to the vlog a mistake because that was all this time that I could have been learning about log footage on the Panasonic GH5 and I just didn't do that. But the GH5 has some other awesome profiles that you can shoot in where vlog isn't essential, but you might wanna upgrade eventually and just try it out, see how to color it, and see what you can do with that dynamic range. Another one of the mistakes I made when I first got my GH5 was that I didn't take full advantage of all of the custom buttons that the GH5 has to offer. Now, if you're not familiar with how customizable the GH5 is, make sure you check out this video right up here all about setting the custom buttons on your GH5. There's just so many options that you can do with the custom buttons, and there's so many buttons that you can customize that you can have everything from 4K crop to your waveforms to variable frame rates to different color profiles all within a custom button that just with your fingers, you can get there super quick and it's super customizable. And I did not take advantage of that when I first got the GH5. So my encouragement to you is check out my video on how to customize the GH5 so that you can take full advantage of the customization on your GH5 to make shooting just so much easier. Another one of the mistakes I made, which I will put together future videos on this, but using the time-lapse feature that is built into the GH5. This thing is incredible. I use the time-lapse feature on the GH4 so much. With the GH5, it's almost like I forgot about it because it had all of these other awesome features like 120p like I talked about earlier. But take advantage of the time-lapse feature on the GH5. And like I said, I'm gonna put a video together in the future talking about how to do that. But it is just an incredible tool with the GH5. So one of the things that you learn as you get to know your camera is you learn how it reacts to light. And one of the things that I wasn't doing when I first got my GH5 was learning how to use the scopes on it and actually using the scopes to make sure everything was lit properly. Now you can see my light right here and you can see how it's hitting my face and you can see how the camera's reacting to it. You can make adjustments to it and post and everything, but learning how to read your scopes on your GH5, like the waveform, vector scopes, histogram, things like that. That will help so much in how you make videos in the future. So make sure you check out my video on GH5 exposure settings, which is right up here. And that video just goes briefly over some of the settings and scopes and tools that the GH5 has. It's not a in-depth tutorial by any means, but it might help you out in learning how to use some of those tools. Now, at first, I didn't realize how big of a deal this next mistake was until you start learning more about the light and how the GH5 reacts to the light. But a mistake that I made was that I did not set my ISO to third increments. Now this makes a huge difference 
especially if you're shooting outdoors or if you're shooting interviews to really dial in that ISO. And just being able to have that option is huge with the GH5. So my encouragement to you is set your ISO increments to one third. Now, if you don't know how to set your ISO to third increments on the GH5, make sure you check out my video on my GH5 cinematic settings right up here. That'll help get your GH5 set up as a cinematic machine. Unless you're a perfect person, which I'm sure a lot of you are, you've probably made some mistakes on the GH5 too. Comment some of those mistakes down in the comment section and how you learn from them. That way we can all learn from those mistakes and we can all become better GH5 shooters. So again, and this is just some quarantine reflection. I don't know what you're reflecting on during this time. Make sure you're staying inside if you can. Make sure you're staying safe. If you got some extra time, make sure you check out one of these videos that's popping up right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.